everybody, Melissa Sorrentino here, chiming in with part two, part de, of the Humility Series. I have a sticky note, everybody, and I wrote words. Look, they're probably, I don't know, they're backwards to me, maybe when this works. This will be an interesting test. This looks backwards to me. Let's see if it's backwards when it actually uploads. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay, so anyway, um, this is my little humility go-to list that I want to talk to you kids about. All right? Let's see here. Be appropriate. Be appropriate to situations. For example, the management and agency situation that I brought up in part one. Now, when you are being appropriate, what I mean is dollars. I know we're artists and we don't like to think about money, but it matters. And especially for an agent or a manager or anybody who like their job is to get money for you. So, you know, if they're not money people, then they're probably not, you know, going to turn into that great of agents. So, um, be appropriate to this situation. If they're not making any money off of you yet, do not treat them like some sort of servant, like, like an employee. They're not an employee, you guys. They're a collaborator. Different, different thing, okay? Like when you're an actor on a set, you and the director are collaborators, ideally. You don't work for the director. You're collaborating. You work for the um, producer or, or the, uh, you know, execs, whoever, whoever's the money people, that's who you work for. You don't work for anybody that, you know, there's that person that pays the bills and you, all the people that are hired with, you know, in different categories, but you don't work for the director. Now in a management hierarchy position, the director is kind of like your manager. Like it's his job to tell you what to do and it's your job to follow what he says to do. So there is a hierarchy there, but you are not, you are collaborators, 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 as it were. All right. Um, be real, be real. And when I say be real, it's this. If you got a horn to toot, toot it just, just a little bit less than you at your most arrogant moment want to like toot it. Does that make sense? Like, if you have a resume that only has, you know, A, B, and C credits, okay? Be appropriate, be real, be real to that. Like, I'm trying to be real with you guys. I've got a whole playlist of making progress, which is this, where there, some of this shit is very real, but I've got my hashtag divorce diary, you guys, and I'm showing y'all with no makeup and like how, how insecure I am and everything like that. I want to maintain authenticity and I want to be real. And my resume, you know, with improv, I can tell you the fact bullet points of what they are, but I'm not in any way trying to inflate the things that I've done. I want to be confident about what I've done. Don't go too far in that camp where you're feeling like a loser. You're not a loser, okay? No one is a fucking loser, including you and me. So be real, okay? Don't inflate or bullshit nonsense your way into things. If somebody asks you, can you do it? You could say, yeah, I can do it. You know, yeah, I think I can do it. I think there's like a famous story of Julia Roberts where she was asked if she could ride a horse and she said yes and she'd never been on one before. But, you know, she pulled it off. So, you know, her guess in her own abilities was appropriate. She didn't, she didn't necessarily, I mean, I wasn't there, but, you know, I don't know that she acted like she was some sort of, like, you know, equestrian. But when asked if she could ride a horse, she said, she's like, yeah, I can get on a horse, you know, I'll ride a horse. And she's athletic enough, so she could, and she did. Um, all right, be fair. This goes right along with being appropriate, being real. Be fair. Be fair. Be reasonable, you know. But don't go so far in being fair and reasonable that you're a pushover. So be fair. Be equitable. Be fair. If your agent tells you to come in at 10 o'clock, come in at, you know, quarter to 10, 10 of 10. Be, you know, fair with their time. Be fair with the compensation. Don't act all pissy because your fucking agent or your manager takes a cut. What the hell are you thinking? 
All right. Even if all it is is because you your submission came in like back when I used to do. We, we, we I'm so fucking old, you guys. We actually had black and white headshot folders with the manager or agent's name like embossed like well here's my bible but okay so it's like embossed on the front of this folder was like the agency name if your headshot was in that folder okay i'm not kidding you when i worked at a show we would we would pull the ones with the folders out first we would we did we pulled the fancy folders out so for you to earn the right to get yourself in the fancy embossed folder um you gotta be fair even if that, even if you're like, hey, that only took them five minutes, and they just had their, they just had their, uh, you know, um, assistant put it in a folder. It's all a value that you couldn't get on your own, and a lot of people put in a lot of work. Even if all we're doing is still compensating guy number one, you know, William and Morris, whatever, uh, you know, the the first founder of the agency put in a bunch of shit ton of fucking free hours. To finally get that name gold and embossed and boom on the front of a folder. So, you know, pay back. Be fair. Be reasonable. Don't be pathetic and don't be a lackey and don't be a kiss up. I'll be respectful and don't be a kiss up. That's my next bullet point. Respectful, not a kiss up. So be respectful, but don't be like, oh, yes, sir. Oh, 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 anything I can do for you? You know, don't beg them for their time. Don't kiss up. Don't act like there's some sort of like, there's like a hero worship going on. But don't be arrogant. Oh my God. If you're going to err on one side of the direction, a smidge of kiss up is going to go a longer way than arrogance. Until you're bringing the bucks, then you should err in the other direction. Okay. Um, be gracious. Be gracious, say thank you, say please, be polite, use all that stuff. And if you suck at it, please get a book on etiquette, read some, um, you know, blogs on etiquette, read some articles, watch YouTube videos, find out how to be gracious. Be freaking gracious, okay? Um, and But on the other hand, don't be a sycophant, you know? If somebody offers you like a bottle of water while you're in the office, say, oh, thank you, I'd love a bottle of water, I'd love a cup of coffee, and go ahead and say thank you. You know, but, um, but don't be like all, can I get you some more coffee? Oh, can I get anything for you? Uh, and like leave them and, you know, beg them to bring them lunch and da 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 everything else. I mean, a little bit of that, especially at first. Yeah, it's it, but just basic on a, keep it on a level of respect. A way to think about it is this. Think of your agent a little bit like they're hosting a party. Like if you would bring a gift, like a hostess gift, that would be the kind of gift that you give to an agent. And until you guys are really, you know, close and tight and you've got like a friendship going, then of course, be appropriate to the friendship. But, you know, um, it, it's one thing to bring like a plate of uh, homemade cookies, just like you might bring to church or you might bring to, you know, your kid's teacher at school, something like that. But, you know, don't, don't give them like uh, keys to a Ferrari. That's kiss up. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, provide service. Offer to provide service. This is actually how I ended up working. Um, I had already had a little bit of experience in the management um, field of working with managers, but I actually, my very first gig of that, you know what I did? I offered to work for free. I said, I know I have no experience. I know I'm fresh to Hollywood. Hollywood, um, you know, I do have a job where I have to make money, but I have a little bit of free time, and I'd be happy to work for free. And um, somebody took me up on it, and pretty much by day two, she was giving me an hourly wage. That's um, that's service. And then um, also when I worked, when I um, was represented by my own agent. I would offer to do certain things, you know, like things like um, make a call or, you know, stuff like that. I would, I would be helpful. I would be cool about doing my part and even above and beyond if it was ever requested of me. On the other hand, when you're doing that service, don't be pathetic or needy. Think of yourself as like a wait staff at like a high end restaurant when you're being, when you're providing a service. You're not like a, um, you're not a servant 
in like, you know, some grungy old, you know, where they're whipping you and making you do shit. But you're, you are a compensated service person that like, that's the persona that you should create if you're not sure what I mean by that. Um, reciprocate with value. Reciprocate with value. This means when the agent or manager or anybody that you're working with asks you to do something, do it and bring value to it. You know, if you're asked to have some lines memorized, have them memorized. Even if it's a casting person asking you to come in for an audition, if they ask you to dress appropriately, show up dressed appropriately. I'm the casting person, I'm representing a client, and I'm pulling in um, talent. So when I pull in talent, that's my reputation in front of the client. So if you come in unprepared, frazzled, late, stinky, looking like shit, that is going to reflect on me, and the client might not hire me again. So it's very important. That's what I mean about reciprocating. That's, that's a business thing, and you need to always bring value. The amount of value that you bring is the amount of value that you're going to end up getting compensated. Um, and then last but not least, be dependable. And that kind of goes right along with that um, value camp. But be dependable, but don't go overboard. If you are asked to come in and meet with your agent, maybe they have, like I, I think my, my agent would have, I don't know how frequently, but maybe uh, certainly quarterly, he would have people come in and sometimes even he had us all come in in a room, like all of his clients of like a certain level and we all kind of came in a room and he gave us like all a talk at one time. I don't know if that's usual or unusual, but that was something he did. So anyway, point being, if you're asked to come in to the office for, you know, be dependable, be on time, be just the right amount early so that you're, you know, ready to hit the ground running when, when, um, you know, the assistant comes out and says, so-and-so we'll see you now, be ready. So show up, give yourself enough time, but don't be, what's the word I use? Don't go overboard. Don't show up a fucking hour early. Nobody wants you hovering around for an hour early. And nobody wants you showing up bringing, um, you know, four pizzas at lunchtime uh, every week. It is overboard and it reads as needy and pathetic. So, pew, pew. we got those, um, what did I call them? Bumpers. There's bumpers in the gutters. So stay in your lane, but don't go into the bumpers, okay? Um, all right, that's all I have to say. That is to further this sort of like bringing the confidence, add the, some humility into the confidence so that it's like always balanced and it's always on even keel and you really find that sweet spot, okay? That's all I have. Bye.